<clears throat> thank you to the team from Midas. Thank you for inviting AOQ to come and present this case study webinar, looking at the finite element modeling and analysis work we did for the Yusefli Dam project using the Midas FEA NX SO package. The contents of my presentation, starting off number one with an introduction, number two, the Yusefli Dam background, number three, the site conditions, number four, problem statement and solution, number five, case study objectives, number six, development of the finite element model, number seven, the analysis assumptions, number eight, a model walkthrough, number nine, presentation of the results, and finally number ten, closing off of the presentation. A brief introduction of myself and ARQ. My name is Ryan Castles. I studied a B. Eng in civil engineering at the University of Pretoria. I am a registered professional engineer with EXA, who are the Engineering Council of South Africa. I have seven years experience in the analysis and design of dams and related structures at AOQ. Also have three years site experience on heavy civils construction. I've been involved in the analysis and design work of 10 dams in my time at AOQ. Two notable dams which I've been involved with, the Pongolapuit Dam, which is located in the KwaZulu-Natal province of South Africa, and the Lesuliapuit Dam, which is located in Zimbabwe. Both these dams are arch dams and uh, I performed analysis work on the dams um, forming part of the dam safety evaluation work. The ARQ consulting company profile. ARQ are based in Pretoria, South Africa. We are an award-winning firm specializing in dams and geotechnical engineering. AOQ were founded in 1993 and currently have 26 full-time staff. AOQ have been involved in the design of 150 dams, 43 new dams in 33 different countries. AOQ have been involved in dam design work on all types of dams, ranging from RCC, RMC, hardfill, concrete arch and concrete gravity dams, CFRD, earthfall, rockfall and composite dams. The photograph on the bottom showing the office building of AOQ in Pretoria. The Yusefli Dam project background. The next few slides I'll show the location of the project, a description of the dam body as well as um, having a look at AOQ specific project involvement. Yusefli Dam is located in the northeast region of Turkey near, near the city of Artvin. The dam forms part of the Koru River hydropower scheme implemented by the DSI. The dam is located upstream of two other notable dams being the Artvin and Irina Dam photograph in the top right showing the Darina Dam, the image on the bottom left showing the Google map view of the dam location, and the photograph bottom right showing a Google Earth photograph of the dam whilst under construction. A description of the Yusefli Dam comprises of a 275 meter high double curvature vari variable thickness arch dam. The crest length is 490 meters. The crest length to height ratio of 1.8. This the dam is defined as a super high arch dam. The dam body contains 4 million cubic meters of concrete. The output capacity of the hydropower scheme is 580 megawatts. The dam um, ranked as the seventh highest dam in the world and the dam body components are made up of the arch, cushion and abutment. These are shown in the image in the bottom left. The top right shows an artist's impression of the dam 
in the bottom right a photograph of the dam body showing the front face of the dam. Having a look at AOQ's project involvement, first of all the dam owner are the DSI who are the Directorate of State Hydraulic Works for Turkey. The Turkish contractor were LIMAC or RLIMAC. The Turkish design consultants Suyapi Engineering and Consulting. The geologists and geotechnical engineers are IC Consulenten from Austria and ARQ we were appointed as the arch dam specialists to undertake analysis and design of the arch dam structure and significant related structures. On the bottom screen a wide angle lens photograph showing the dam body taken from the upper left bank in relation to the very mountainous area of uh, the northeast region of Turkey. How did the site conditions look? Uh, the site conditions comprised very complex founding conditions and uh, this would obviously have an impact on the dam foundation, structural interaction, upon loading, the complex finding conditions more specifically comprised of a heterogeneous foundation rock mass. This heterogeneous rock mass made up of various uh, rock layers, vertical and horizontal, uh, with a broad range of geotechnical properties, as well as inhibiting um, rock mass jointing. The image on the left is a screenshot taken from the foundation model in the Leapfrog Foundation, uh, excuse me, the Leapfrog software provided by IC Consulenten. The layered foundation model clearly shows various horizontal and vertical rock layers, um, each given um, uh, different colors. Um, and showing the aerial view of the foundation in the region of the dam footprint um, where the excavation takes place and on the right hand side a section of the foundation taken along the dam axis once again showing in uh, all the different color schemes the various vertical and horizontal rock layers the photograph on the left showing an overlay of typical rock joint orientations for the site. On the right hand side an image taken again from the leapfrog model showing the full extent of the um, layered foundation model. All the various colors again representing the different um, rock layers with different material parameters as well as indicating some of the rock jointing in the foundation. So what is the effect of having complex foundation conditions on the arch behavior? Um, what is the dam foundation structural interaction? What does it look like? Um, more specifically, the stress distribution and deflection of the dam is directly related to the deformation modulus of the foundation. Higher concentrations of stress transfer um, are expected to occur at the dam foundation interface over stiffer foundation zones and uh, on the contrary uh, bridging um, stresses expected to recur to occur in the base of the dam um, over zones of softer material Collectively, all these uh, result in a very complex transfer of loads from the dam into the foundation. The two images shown on the left and the right, um, typical load transfer of an arch dam, concrete arch dam, showing the arching action in the dam structure and the transfer of the arching action into the abutments and also 
uh, transfer of loads from the art structure into the lower portion of the foundation. Uh, this um, occurs due to the cantilever action of the art structure. So what is the problem statement and the solution for purposes of this <coughs> case study webinar to ensure a realistic modeling and analysis of a stiff art structure on rock foundation of variable stiffness. The solution we propose is the use of the finite element method to model and analyze the dam and foundation structure. All of this um, modeling and analysis work done using the MIDAS software. <clears throat> what are the objectives of the case study? To demonstrate the FE modeling capabilities of MIDAS FEA NX for performing complex three-dimensional analyses. To provide a high-level overview of the steps followed to develop the finite element model. And to present selected modeling inputs, assumptions, and analysis results. The next set of slides will give a overview of the development of the finite element model, starting with simplification of high resolution survey data from start from site, followed by the modeling of the dam and foundation geometry as solid bodies in AutoCAD, hereafter the importing of the geometry into the MIDAS software, the creation of the finite element model in the MIDAS software. And finally, taking a look at the completed model and running through some standard uh, quality control checks, looking at the mesh and the various um, element types. Simplification of high resolution data from site. High resolution DTM files were received from site from IC Consulentin. These comprised Layer defining surfaces made up of high resolution 3D faces, um, defining the interfaces between the various rock layers. Um, the AOQ team uh, simplified the, these high resolution surfaces by elimination of unnecessary vertices in AutoCAD, uh, thereby creating low resolution surfaces, still providing good representation of the foundation conditions. The image in the bottom left shows two surfaces in the dam. The pink surface is an example of a DTM file received from site with high resolution and made up of numerous 3D faces and vertices simplified into the gray surfaces. Surface showing a lower resolution with less 3D faces and vertices, but still showing a good representation of the geometrical configuration. Another example of, um, of simplification of the surfaces, a red surface in the top image showing a vertical surface made up of numerous 3D faces and vertices, simplified into the green surface at the bottom, showing good representation of the geometrical configuration, but a large redu reduction in um, data size. Another two examples of simplification of DTM surfaces in both images, the left and the right. The gray surface um, made up of high resolution 3D faces um, were simplified into the blue and red surfaces by AOQ in AutoCAD uh, using 3D polylines and lofting between these polylines to create the simple surfaces. Modeling of the foundation geometry. The dam and the foundation were modeled as solid bodies in AutoCAD. The foundation solids were formed by cutting up a solid block using the simplified surfaces created from the DTM files. On the left is an image of a partially complete foundation block. Uh, it's a geometry solid. Uh, in displayed in pink and two uh, modeling surfaces, the gray surface horizontal surface and the green vertical surface 
the block was then sliced by these two surfaces uh, to obtain the model on the right uh, showing a portion of the pink um, foundation changing to yellow this um, showing a typical vertical rock layer and a portion of the pink block changing to purple below the gray horizontal surface again showing a separation of the rock into horizontal layers in this slide just a, a nice representation of the complexity of the foundation model uh, also in AutoCAD showing all the various foundation layers in different colors as well as the numerous um, three-dimensional surfaces used to cut up a foundation block into the various foundation layers. Modeling of the dam geometry. The arch configuration was modeled with elliptical and circular arcs, extradus and intra monolith locations. A watertight surface of the dam was then created by lofting between the profile defining polylines. And finally, a watertight surface. Uh, the watertight surface was converted into a solid body, as shown on the right. The image on the left, also taken from AutoCAD, showing the wireframe model made up of the various arc lines and um, profile defining polylines. Let's take a brief look at the completed geometry model in AutoCAD. On the left and the right, the left the front side of the dam and the right the back of the dam. The dam clearly modeled with all the uh, various monoliths as well as the spillway and the cushion and the foundation model comprising all the various rock layers um, given um, different colors for clear representation. Um, the size of the foundation model at the, was taken as two times the dam height. Um, the full extent for the bottom taken as two times the dam height and the full extent around the sides, the radial extent taken from the top left and top right banks as one and a half times the dam height. Um, uh, these um, foundation model extents are in line with um, uh, dam publications such as USBRC and FERC. Once the dam and foundation model was complete in AutoCAD, it was exported in the form of a SAT file and imported into the Midas FENX software. The Midas FENX software um, is able to interact with other CAD software. Yeah, it is easy to import um, various um, file formats for solid modeling. Typical file formats uh, that are used are the STEP file, the SAT file, and IGS files. The MIDAS software also has geometry modeling capability. This gives the user the option to either import uh, the geometry from other CAD software or to actually create the geometry uh, within the MIDAS modeling space. <clears throat> and after importing the various geometry bodies into the MIDAS software, the AutoConnect tool was used to ensure compatibility of the various geometry bodies. Hereafter, the material parameters and properties were defined in the MIDA software. A meshing strategy was developed uh, according to uh, expected strain gradients of the analysis results. Uh, the meshing strategy uh, comprised of having a fine mesh in the area of interest, um, that being the dam and the immediate foundation. Uh, the mesh having a coarse mesh on the outer extents of the foundation and a smooth transition from the fine mesh in the dam region to the coarse mesh in the outer foundation regions. Uh, 
to achieve a met meshing strategy, the geometry mesh size control tool uh, in the MIDAS software was used. Uh, this can be seen in the image on the right hand side, various red dots uh, in the image showing the application of the mesh size control tool on the outer extents of the foundation geometry. Uh, after implementing a successful meshing strategy and applying the mesh control, the geometry was discretized using the Midas 3D solid auto mesher with hybrid elements, hybrid elements comprising hexahedral, tetrahedral, pyramid, and wedge elements. Once the um, mesh model was complete, uh, it was constrained at the foundation outer faces accordingly. Uh, the lower foundation face was constrained against translation in the X, Y, and Z, and the um, outer side vertical faces of the foundation model were constrained against translation in the X and Y, the X direction being the cross canyon direction, the Y direction, the upstream downstream direction, and the Z direction, the vertical direction. After constraining the model, the various loading functions defining hydrostatic salt and uplift were uh, input into the model space and um, after defining the functions, the actual loads we were applied to the mesh sets. The self-weight was applied as a gravitational body force. The hydrostatic and salt loads were applied as um, pressures to the mesh surfaces. The images in the bottom on the left showing the boundary constraints on the outer extents of the foundation mesh. The middle image just showing typical um, hydrostatic uh, load functions on a dam. The image on the right showing the application of the pressure load on the finite element model mesh on the upstream face of the dam. Having a look at the completed model, uh, it is clear from the model that we have achieved nice mesh transition from a fine mesh at the dam and foundation, immediate foundation to a coarse mesh on the outer extents, um, becoming even more coarse towards the lower outer extents. Each of the various mesh sets assigned colors according to the foundation properties for um, uh, ease of use. Uh, user friendliness and to allow other users to use the model. Um, the large finite element model is made up of 187,000 nodes, 479,000 elements, and 561,000 degrees of freedom. The entire um, model has 100% compatibility between the various mesh sets. Uh, this was achieved um, thanks to the MIDAS AutoMesh algorithm and was achieved without the need for um, forcing compatibility with the use of contact elements. Um, taking a further look at the dam and foundation model, we can see the various um, vertical uh, rock layers in yellow um, and again just an indication of the complexity of the model with the top two rock layers deactivated. The appropriate meshing strategy um, product shown here, um, regular convex shaped element, regular internal angles to ensure we don't have angular distortion. Um, suitable internal angle size greater than 60 degrees, less than 120 degrees. Uh, also achieving elements with a low taper ratio, uh, typically uh, seeking to have this value below 5. And also, again, 
a good Jacobian ratio um, for most of the elements, um, seeking, well, a value of above 0 0.3. Ideally, the Jacobian ratio should be close to 1, uh, but when creating uh, meshes for complex geometry with um, lots of curvature and sharp faces and warped uh, sharp edges and warped faces, a Jacobian ratio of 0 0.3 is suitable. Um, and finally, it is good practice to avoid constant strain gradient elements in the dam, um, this being the area of interest to ensure that we get a nice smooth transition of uh, stresses and strain results. Analysis assumptions. <clears throat> Taking a look at the analysis assumptions implemented in the model, the material model, loading conditions, analysis case, uh, which was applied in the form of a stage construction approach. So what were the material model assumptions? The dam and foundation continuum was uh, given linear elastic material parameters. Uh, this is in line with the assumption that the normal loading condition uh, will not load the dam beyond yielding. So the uh, stress range will be within the linear elastic realm. Um, the joints between the dam monoliths were modeled using interface elements with nonlinear stiffness modulus, simulating zero tensile capacity. And the joint at the dam, found, dam foundation interface also modeled using interface elements with stiffness modulus representing a low tensile capacity. Um, the image in the top right showing the various interface elements between the dam monoliths and as well between the dam base and the foundation. And the bottom right, um, just showing the constitutive model for the interface element with the traction versus displacement graph um, showing the multilinear elastoplastic um, uh, stiffness profile. What loading conditions were assumed? The dam was analyzed under usual loading conditions. It was comprised of normal operating level, um, taken as full supply level. The foundation was assumed to have zero unit weight. The displacement of the foundation due to own weight was assumed to have fully occurred prior to construction and loading of the dam. Uh, the, also, the in-situ stresses in the foundation material near the surface are neg negligible compared to the stresses caused by the dam load. Uh, these assumptions are obviously suitable as the analysis objective is to evaluate the dam structure and not the foundation. The dam self-weight was applied as a gravitational body force. Uh, the particular loading um, condition was defined as load case 1, as shown in the table. The silt load applied as an active lateral earth pressure, um, taking the buoyant unit weight of the silt. The drained uplift pressure on the dam base was assumed to have a multilinear load distribution according to um, USBRC and FERC dam publications. The two images, um, one on the left again showing the load functions, um, the image on the right showing a bit more detail on how the uplift pressure load functions are derived. The multilinear uplift distribution showing a kink at the location of the drain. These were applied assuming a two-thirds or 67% drain efficiency. Uh, how was the analysis case developed? Uh, we used a stage construction approach. So basically the finite element model was built up, loaded and analyzed in six stages. The first stage, stages one to four, um, comprised of 
four vertical lifts of the dam model uh, to simulate the dam um, behavior under gravity loading as the dam was constructed. And the final stage in the construction stage analysis, the application or activation of the hydrostatic and salt, salt loads. Um, the finite element model was analyzed um, by running the Amidas Ephionic solver tool using 14 out of 16 CPU threads as well as uh, GPU acceleration. This allowed for uh, reduced runtime. For the next part of the webinar, I'll do a brief run through, walkthrough of the model in the Midas uh, software model space. Just going to quickly uh, end the slideshow and go into the Midas software user interface. There is a nice uh, three-dimensional view of the dam and foundation geometry showing all the various rock layers color-coded according to their material properties. Each of these geometry bodies is given a name and sorted in subfolders to allow for easy activation and deactivation. Um, there you can see I deactivated the model of the, uh, the geometry of the foundation. And here we can just see the dam arch and cushion structure, the front of the dam, the back of the dam, and rotating all the various views. Um, having a look at the various material parameters created, the dam, cushion, and the various foundation layers, P5, P4, P3, each of these given the constitutive material parameters, elastic modulus, poison ratio, unit weight, and various others. Um, a quick look at the model of the mesh. Deactivate the geometry and activate the entire mesh model. Rotating it to see the front of the dam. Once again, each mesh set given a suitable name, um, making the, the model uh, user friendly for other users after creating the model. Um, each, yeah, each dam monolith given a name and given a separate color. Um, The different colors again representing the foundation material parameters. Uh, also, just a nice view of the various interface elements modeled at the monolith joints, as well as between the dam and the foundation. Um, Having all the mesh sets neatly sorted allows for easy activation and deactivation of the model. Here we look at the foundation model, the various mesh sets and the nice mesh transition from fine to coarse elements. And um, having a look at the quality of the elements for the, the dam body. Just activate those. Currently in view is the mesh sets for the dam. And I'd just like to have a look at the mesh quality using the Midas mesh quality check tool. Defining an aspect ratio threshold threshold of six, showing very few elements exceeding the threshold. Defining a mesh or an element, um, skew angle threshold of 60. Um, 
showing the internal angle limit. Once again, very few elements showing poor quality. Warpage. Taper. Ratio of 0.5. And the Jacobian ratio, as mentioned earlier, 0.3. Collectively, this all showing a very high quality mesh in the damn body can even be seen just uh, with a naked eye. Um, very regular elements, um, almost um, represented of, of neat blocks. Going back to the entire model, just to view the boundary conditions. As well, as mentioned earlier, boundary constraints applied uh, to the nodes at the outer extents on the bottom and around the edges of the model or the foundation. Another um, thing to look at is the, the load functions defined in MIDAS under general functions the various hydrostatic loading functions defined uh, clearly, clearly a linear um, representation of hydrostatic conditions the upstream face the downstream face um, slightly more complex loading function for the uplift loading um, Applied as a multilinear pressure. Then taking a look at the application of the loads onto the dam model, isolating the dam and showing the application of gravity, gravitational body force upstream hydrostatic pressure as well as the uplift applied to the base of the dam each uh, monolith visually to the various monoliths according to their location and size and the final um, step I'd like to show you is the development of the staged construction sorry about that just activate the full model take the loading off The model space showing the entire dam and foundation model going into the construction stage um, steps. Each construction stage step showing the activation and deactivation of applicable mesh sets running through the, the various stages of the analysis um, showing in the model space. Uh, uh, the, the activation of the various mesh sets for each of the um, subsequent um, stages dam 1 to 4 and ending in loading I think that uh, concludes the walkthrough through the um, MIDAS model returning to the presentation <coughs> finally the presentation of the analysis results for the Yusefli Dam starting with the verification of the analysis results then looking at displacement results 
various stress, stress results, as well as results from a sensitivity analysis. Verification of analysis results. Summation of forces extracted from the MIDAS uh, results file compared to a hand calculation. This is good practice to ensure that all loadings are correctly applied. Uh, in the bottom left the image showing a screenshot of the um, summation of forces extracted from the MIDAS results file. Other verification um, checks ma um, maximum displacement results or within reasonable range. This is a good check to ensure the, the correct units were input into the analysis. Common other input errors, use of incorrect units, metric, imperial, or use of incorrect notations, um, skipping decimals or zeros or having too many zeros uh, in the number. On the right hand side is a, a contour plot of the um, dam radial displacement, showing the maximum displacement of the dam. This also taken from the MIDAS model. The stress results. The arch dam predominant structural behavior um, is made up of arch action and cantilever action. The vertical cantilever stresses shown in the top two images. The downstream face um, in the top left corner showing definite cantilever action, the top right image um, showing a combination of um, cantilever action as well as um, arching due to curvature in the vertical plane and overhang of the upstream face of the dam. The two images on the bottom showing the arching stresses, um, the downstream face showing the arching mechanism dominating for the top two-thirds of the dam uh, with much less arching stress occurring towards um, the lower third of the downstream face on the upstream face of the dam um, arching action dominating pretty much the whole structure other important stress results the principal stresses the P3 and P1 Principal stress results indicate the maximum compression and tensions in the dam. Um, the top two images showing the P3 principal stresses on the downstream and upstream faces. The uh, stresses on the upstream face very similar to the arching stresses shown previously. This showing that the arching being the maximum compressions in the dam and the P3 principal stresses on the downstream face showing the combination of arching on the top two-thirds of the dam and cantilevering along the toe towards the bottom third of the dam. The P1 principal stresses showing negligible tensions on both the upstream and downstream face of the dam. Other uh, important stress results, looking at the P3 stress vectors, these show the orientation of the maximum compression stress state and typically the direction of load transfer in the arch dam. The image on the left gives a very good indication of the load, load transfer and how it transitions from um, strictly arching at the crest of the dam moving towards cantilevering at the bottom third of the dam on the upstream face of the dam um, arching tends to occur in most of the dam structure apart from a small portion at the lower upstream face further displacement results uh, a sensitivity analysis was undertaken um, looking at the radial and tangential displacements of the dam. Uh, this um, the sensitivity analysis was used to evaluate the sensitivity of the deflection to changes in the cushion stiffness. 
the analysis results also indicate a, a reasonable spectrum of expected displacement results in each of the images below the left and the right the various uh, curves showing the displacement results for the different cushion stiffnesses on the left we have the upstream downstream displacements at the crown cantilever and on the right um, plot we have the tangential displacements on the right and left bank of the dam. Coming to the end of this presentation in closing, I would like to relook at the problem statement being the analysis of a concrete arch dam on a heterogeneous foundation. Uh, this comprises of complex three-dimensional conditions which require a comprehensive and accurate three-dimensional finite element analysis to evaluate the structure. We at AOQ were able to achieve this using the MIDAS FEA NX or GTS NX software. The software has powerful modeling capabilities for complex analyses. We've shown the software has an advanced three dimensional auto meshing algorithm which enables high quality discretization using hybrid elements. The software has a user friendly GUI. The software allows for easy interaction between other software such as CAD and Excel for modeling, pre-processing and post-processing. And the MIDA software makes use of an efficient analysis solver tool with multi-threading and GPU acceleration capability for solving large models in reduced analysis time. I thank you for your time. And I would now like to open the floor 